Hello, uh, I'm gonna give my uh, journey with depression and anxiety, which I've suffered with for 20 plus years. I'm sure some of you think that him, it could be anybody. Um, I was born in Nicaragua and I came to the United States when I was a year old to move to Echo Park. Then I moved to uh, Azusa where I've lived for many years and uh, I had a good, pretty good childhood. Um, don't have too many complaints. I remember the days playing baseball, football at the street. Had a pretty much normal upbringing. Um, there are some things that affected me when I was little that I probably haven't told many people. And I was a young man, young boy actually, seven or eight years old. and. I was called stupid, and that stayed in my head for the longest time. It came from someone I loved, and when you love somebody, you take it to heart, you know, especially a young boy. I know I'm a man now, but uh, that's something that was lodged in my head, you know. And then I moved forward and into my teenage years, and I met a young woman, Diane, who would become my wife. And sadly, she passed away December 3rd uh, in 1990. And uh, it was a very, very hard blow. I, I really didn't know how to cope with it. Uh, I mourned a very long time because I loved her dearly. dearly. And uh, you know, what's mourning too long? Everybody mourns differently. Everybody loves differently. And uh, it's something that uh, you'll never forget, you know. I'm at peace now. There's no more pain. And I think her death had a lot to do with, with me going through what I've gone through because it didn't happen until after that. And I, I just suffered so much inside not knowing what to do or say, I, I let my mind take control of me. And it, I was like the ocean back there. It just took me wherever it wanted to and I allowed it to. And it took me into depressions. It took me into seven different depressions that I had. And uh, they, they got worse, worse and worse. I'm gonna talk about the more recent ones because uh, I remember those more than the other ones, but they're all painful and you suffer. In the last couple of them that I lost 30 pounds, I wouldn't leave the house. I stopped going to my church at St. Francis and I would go to one in Covina, St. Louis de Marliac, or just find another church, St. Christopher's in West Covina. I'd find somewhere else to go. I didn't want people to see me or ask me what was going on. I didn't want to see anybody. Um, I have two failed relationships because of this and I was actually going to get married and I just walked away because I just didn't know uh, it's like a tidal wave coming over you just I can't stop it I couldn't stop it and uh, that was about a year and a half ago and this last one lasted about a year and a half ago the uh, depression and uh I'm sorry I'm not a professional speaker, but I'm speaking from my heart. So if I say some words too many times, please understand. Um, I, I endured a lot. I, lo I endured a lot of losses, uh, properties, and uh, I lost my house after Diane passed away. Uh, had a claim bankruptcy, not embarrassed. Just couldn't afford it by myself. You know, I've lost about three or four homes, lost some cars. Some of it was my fault. I made decisions, that, foolish decisions that uh, I didn't think of the consequences. And I had years where I, I partied pretty much, pretty, I partied hard. And uh, it was try I think I was trying to numb myself from the pain because it worked for a while, but after that it just felt an emptiness. And, 
I knew this is this wasn't the way. So I I went to a ministry from about 2009, the Sower Ministry at St. Francis of Rome, which started changing my life. I started going to retreats, Axe retreats. I started going to many, many, many retreats, silent retreats, but I just couldn't find peace. I didn't know how to find it. I knew I wanted to be healed and stop from the suffering that I was going through. And you know, people can't see it. They can't see inside my head and my heart how I felt, but it was just hard to love myself. And hard to love myself, it was hard to love others. And uh, I just wanna say that it's been a journey. I, I'm in a place right now that I can't believe I'm at. And I could say with, with 100% sureness that I'll never have depression again. God has healed me. I had to do some work with it though. I had to work. And uh, like I said, I lost a lot of things, monetary things, which don't matter really. My friendships, I thought I lost them too. I went away from my friends, from Tommy, from Jorge, from Steven, Trick. Uh, I don't want to forget any names, but it's, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying it out loud. He said, he just came to visit me. People would call me and I wouldn't answer the phone. And this lasted for about a year and a half until about three months ago, when my nephew called me and told me, do you want a job? And I said, yes, but inside I really didn't want a job. See, I wasn't working for seven months prior to that. The last job I had was at Costco, which Holly helped me get in there. And I'm very appreciative of her. Just checking to see if it's still rolling. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my thought, but uh, Let me, let me compose myself. Um, it's been a it's been a uphill climb. People tried to help me. People tried to tell me just to get up and do something when I was in turmoil and and lost in my mind. There's different levels of uh, of uh, depression, and I believe mine is was the worst the worst kind you can have because it took over my life and I hope you guys could see me but uh, yeah, it pretty much took over my life and I allowed it to I only could see that now people would tell me to fight back my uncles my aunts praying for me from Nicaragua oh no there goes <laughs> there goes my cards but anyways I There's so many people praying for me and I will never forget that, especially for my church. And I'm sure other Christians, other brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters were praying for me, letting me know how much they love me, that I mattered. You know, they can take you to a deep place, a place that you would never want to be. I had a time where said a comment to my sister, get me a shotgun. Once people start saying that kind of stuff, start worrying. They're not just saying that, they want to get out of, they want to end their life. I also, um, it's not easy to talk about. I, I went to my brother's room to look for his gun and I couldn't find it. Thank God. All I could think was <clears throat> about my mom and what this would do to her and my family and friends. God must have been there.
this is very personal but I have to say it so we can help people especially when they're killing themselves because they think there's no one out there that cares yes we suffer but there's still people that care and if people love you you're putting them through suffering too because they love you they don't want to see you that way talked to my brother Joe and he cried talking to me seeing the way that I was he cried Maria cried when I talked about the gun about the shotgun it's not easy to talk about this but you got to get it out there I don't want to just save one life I want to save many. This is my mission in life. And God is behind me so no one can stop me. Just give me a second. I got to get some cards, please. Just hold on a second. Found the lists. Sorry about that, guys. Somebody help me get them. Uh, I didn't do this on my own. I can't claim to do it on my own. But what I did do when I got that job three months ago, I started taking action. I started listening to positive affirmations. There's Christian positive affirmations and regular affirmations. And I started listening to Louise Hay, which taught me how to love myself. I guess all these years I really didn't know what it was like to love yourself. But thank God he was there. All my friends, Jorge, Tom and Christina, Steve, AKA Trick, Rachel, the Venegas family, Bob, Alice, Leigh, Christina, Robert, the Figueroa family. Sally Garcia, who prayed constantly for me, sent me messages even if I didn't return anything. I read them. I read the messages. Once again, for Holly helping me to get the job at Costco, even though I was working there and I was full, in, full of anxiety, I had to leave several times because I just couldn't, I couldn't function. For my uncles and my aunts here in, in Nicaragua who have prayed for me constantly. For my church friends who prayed constantly for me. The Sower family. For Juan and Diane who never gave up on me. For my brother Joe and Rosemary who always opened their home to me and said that I'm welcome whenever. They were loving to me, regardless of I felt or what I did or didn't do. For Anita and Jimmy, who live with me, who were there for me, more than you know, watching the Dodgers lose the World Series together lifting me up, telling me that I was worthy, that I was worthy, and that I was worth something. For Edie and Jerry, she's just a positive person, 
always has been. And she's a rock. She lost her son, Randy. And I saw this woman with strength. I didn't know how she did it. But it had to have been God. For Henry, even though we fight, I love you. I know I haven't been the best brother to you. Forgive me. For Maria Trey. I love that guy. They never forgot about me. I don't think I was gonna get emotional. For all my nieces and nephews, thank you, Raymond, for the job. You know that I love you very much, and I called every single one of you to tell you that, and I mean it. Because I felt that I wasn't a good uncle and to my godchildren. Louie, Madison, Joey. I was caught in my own life, in my own head. And I wasn't a good example to you. For where I currently work at ELA, for all the workers, especially for this homeboy, Victor who I take to work every day. He would always say, you're living the American dream. Always positive, even though he doesn't think so. You're positive, bro. I lift up the managers that allowed me to come here, to be here this weekend. I was only working there three months and they allowed me to come to Maui so easily it was just can I go sure why not for father Richard who has been a good friend who have stepped away from two times not just once but two times for and he's just received me with open arms every time never questioned me didn't ask me anything, just with open arms. For Father Gustavo, who came to my house and prayed with me. I'll never forget that, Father. Thank you. For Father Bruno, my spiritual director, who guides me and leads me in my spiritual life. Good confessor, a good friend. I don't wanna leave anybody out, but if I do, I'm sorry. I tried to, to remember everybody and everything for Agnes, who prayed constantly for me. Thank you, Agnes, I love you. for all her friends and all the sower ministry that prayed dearly for me. For the Axe community. For Deacon, John, and Leslie, who opened their home to me and didn't even know I was depressed, but I was eating dinner there a couple times. They just opened the doors for me, thank you. For Deacon, Mike, and Donna, thank you so much for, for constantly praying for me and opening your doors for me as well. And for Mike, Deacon Mike, talking with me, fellowshipping with me, giving me advice and praying with me. I'll never forget. Also, my mom and dad 
especially my mom, because she had to endure so much suffering and watching me suffer. I'm not a parent, but I could see that she was suffering, and I was told that I, she was suffering, and that's the last thing I wanted, but I couldn't stop the pain and the, 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 the depression. I didn't know how to stop it. I love her with all my heart. She's God's gift to me. She'll be 83 on Monday. Please pray for her. Now I want to get to this weekend. This is weekends for Jason and Kara who are getting married. I called them about four weeks ago. Jason was like a, a brother, a brother from another mother. His family loves me and I love them. I called him and left him a message on a Wednesday. Didn't call back. Two days later, I called him again on Friday. Didn't, he sent me a text while, while I was calling saying that he was at work and he was busy. That he couldn't talk. An hour later he called me. What's up Milt? We started to, to chat and uh, he was just listening to me. And he told me I was a different person. And I said yes, I'm a different person. And then he said, Milt, I want you to come to my wedding. I said, let me see if I can get the days off. I've only been here three months. Let's see what they say. Bill said yes. Eddie said yes. And it was a go. I booked the flight the same day. And that's not something I really, really would do is take action right away. Here we are. Tomorrow's the wedding at 8.30 in the morning. And I'm gonna film it so you guys can watch it. It's 8.30 Hawaii time, so 10.30 California, if you're in California. I'll be filming a little bit of it. That phone call changed my life forever. He received me home. Like the prodigal son. I was lost, but I'm found. I know that I probably forgot some names. I just remembered one. For all crews, I love you. Thank you for being a good friend. Thank you. Any blessings to you and your family. I hate to leave pe people's names out, but I've been seeing, oh, Danette. Danette, thank you so much. Thank you for being there and believing in me. For the Crawford family, Mike, Don, and Susan. For Aunt Bryn, they're like my family. I made some bad decisions in life, but things could change around if you honor and serve the Lord. I'm glad and so happy and full of life and full of love. I could tell people I love them and I mean it. This is my best vacation ever. so peaceful here in Maui and the people are great. God put me here today to share this. And I will continue the mission that he has put in front of me. There's no stopping me. If you want to come along for the ride, I'm more than happy to, to have you.
God bless you. Take care. And I'll still be doing messages because this is going to be my life. I love you all.